All right, the continuation of 7, 1. So we already did the restricted values. This part's going to be on how to reduce these fractions. Now, we've done a lot of this before. It's just been a while. Um, this was back in Chapter 5. So we're just going to kind of quickly go through it again. Let's just start with fractions, okay? 18 over 24. Without using a calculator, we can reduce this by a factor of 6. Because we can rewrite 18 as 6 times 3 and 24 as 6 times 4. Because of how we multiply fractions, that we're able to multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom, I can split those two fractions apart and make it 6 over 6 times 3 over 4. Now, 6 over 6 is the same thing as 1. So when I cancel those out, I'm making it 1. So I get 1 times 3 fourths, which is just 3 fourths. That means that these two fractions are equal. Just This one just looks different, just wearing lipstick and a dress. Okay? Now, that is key. Okay, This multiplication is key. You cannot do this. You cannot um, cancel with addition. If I tried to write 18 as 10 plus 8 and 24 as 10 plus 14 and then cancel those 10s, it doesn't work. That's because of how we add fractions. I cannot take this out and make this 1 plus 8 over 14. And even if I could, adding 1 isn't the same as multiplying by 1. We know multiplying by 1 doesn't change anything. So you got to be really careful. So you can only cancel these kind of things, like those 6s right there. I'll grab a pencil and do it lightly. I can cancel those 6s. Because of that multiplication, you cannot cancel with that addition. And it's going to be so tempting. You're going to want to do that. Okay, so we're going to have to resist this urge. Okay, so looking at one like this, this is back in Chapter 5 when we did our exponent rules. Really, you can view this as three separate problems. You can look at the numerical, the coefficient part here, the 9 over 12. So I pulled it out and did that reducing. Then I pulled the x's out, the x squared over x, which is x to the first. And you might recall from the exponent rules that when you divide with the same base, you subtract the exponents. Or you can say that that x will cancel one of those. Either way, you're left with an x to the one. This one, you get y to the third over y to the fourth. If you want to use the subtraction, you would get the 3 minus 4, which is negative 1. That puts a negative 1 right here. we got to get rid of that negative exponent so you can move it down here to the denominator and make it a positive 1. You could have also taken the approach of saying these three y's will cancel three of those and leave you with a y to the first in the bottom, which is ultimately what we end up with. So I want you to see the three separate problems and how I kind of handled those separately. Here, you know, I've got that x to the 1. Of course, Hawks doesn't want you to write that 1. So I didn't. And that negative, you do need to have all your answers with positive exponents. So that negative moves down here and becomes a positive. So this is kind of chapter 5. Okay, so this one, I'm going to do it the same way, but I'm going to do a little bit more at once. So 20 over 30, I can reduce that numerically by 10 and just get 2 thirds. This x to the fifth over x squared that I originally had, you can do this as 5 minus 2 is 3. That's what this division is right here. Or you can think of it as those two x's, because x squared is x times x, will cancel two of these five and leave you with three on the top. So there's my x to the three. The y doesn't have any other y's that it can simplify with, so it's just along for the ride. So this is very much a chapter five kind of problem as well. So this might look a little familiar. I'm just going through this again just to kind of, you know, jog your memory. Okay, 
this one, 3x over x squared plus 3x. This is where you will just start getting canceling crazy. You will just be like, oh, I see 3x's. I'm going to cancel those out. No, you cannot do that. That plus right there is what is stopping you. If that were times right there, that, see that plus right there, right there, that, if that were times, then yes, cancel those. But that is not a times. That's a plus. So you cannot cancel these. Trust me, if you could, I would. I'm not trying to make this harder. I promise. So what do you have to do? Okay, we know what not to do. We're going to have to factor it. Oh, yeah. We're going to be doing factoring. So we got 3 times x. Remember, the smushing is times. And then here, there's a GCF I can take out. There's a GCF of x. See it? There it is. When I remove that GCF, I get x plus 3. Now, I cannot cancel that 3 with that 3. See that plus right there? Nope. However, see that times, that x times or smushed against the parentheses? I can cancel this x and this x because this one is multiplied by 3 and this one is multiplied by all of that. So I can cancel. If it's got a multiplication symbol next to it, you can cancel it. As long as it's not being added to something else, you can cancel. Now, what that means that you're left with is just a 3 on the top and an x plus 3 on the bottom. Do not cancel those 3's either. See that plus sign? You can't do it. You cannot cancel those 3's. So let's look at another one. 7x minus 14 over x minus 2. The best rule to follow with these is to factor the top and factor the bottom completely and then just see what you can cancel. Do not try to cancel too soon because if you just go straight into it, you're like, oh, I'm going to cancel those x's. I'm going to cancel those minus signs. I'm going to cancel that line on that 2 with that line on that 1. I mean, you just don't just be careful because you could end up doing all kinds of of terrible, horrible, awful, wrong stuff. Okay, looking at this, you guys know how to factor, right? You know to take out a GCF first. So let's take out a GCF. I can take out a GCF of 7 on the top. Oh, I expose the answer. Don't look, look away. So take out that 7 and you get X minus 2. This is an X minus 2. Now check it out. I can cancel those X minus 2s. Now, I know you're thinking, no, 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 you said I couldn't because there's a plus or a minus there. Oh, but I'm not canceling these X's and then these 2's. I am canceling this entire factor over that entire factor. Because I can split this up into 7 over 1 times this over itself. So I'm canceling the entire factor. So while you cannot cancel something if it's got a plus or a minus next to it, it has to be multiplication, you can cancel it as one entire quantity. So that leaves me with just 7. All right, so don't worry. I'm going to do a ton of these. <laughs> You're like, oh, great. So that way we get plenty of practice, okay? Factor it first, then cancel the factors. That means anything like on the outside or the entire parenthesis is the factor. All right, let's look at this one. All right, good time to pause the video. Try to factor this completely. This is just going to be some GCF action going on here. Factor the top and then factor the bottom. Looking for a GCF on the top, factor it. So look at these as two separate problems to factor. So pause the video, try to factor it, see what can cancel. Okay. On the top, the GCF is going to be an X. On the bottom, the GCF is going to be a Y. Ooh, on the top also, 6 and 4, that's got a uh, GCF of 2, so 2X. Two Okay, there it is, 2x. We take that out, we get 3x plus 2. On the bottom, when I take out that y, I'm left with 3x plus 2. I can cancel that whole thing as a quantity. Okay. That's different than up here, where I said you can't cancel those 3x's. You absolutely can't. 
However, if this were x squared plus 3x and those were exactly the same, I could cancel those as one big quantity. So now that these are canceled, I'm just left with 2x over y. So the important thing is to factor it first. You got to look at the top and the bottom as separate problems to be factored and then look for what you can um, what you can then cancel. Now we're going to do some more of that, but let me just go ahead and do it within the context of the next part of this section. That is to multiply fractions. Now you can do fractions two ways. If you want to multiply, and I just did some basic fractions here, 3 fourths and 12 fifteenths. If you want to multiply these together, you could multiply first. 3 times 12 is 36. 4 times 15 is 60. Then you can reduce. Both of these reduce by a factor of 12. And you get 3 fifths. Does that sound familiar? I hope so. There's also a shortcut. Same fractions, 3 fourths times 12 over 15. You can reduce and then multiply. So remember, you can say, oh, well, 4 goes into 12 three times. So that 4 over 12 reduces to be 1 over 3. Or sorry, 1 down here, 3 up there. 3 and 15, that reduces to be 1 fifth. Then you can multiply 1 times 3 and 1 times 5. You can take either approach to this, okay? And that's going to be important because we're going to be multiplying some of these rational functions. Now, I just say multiply and reduce. I'm going to let you decide which order you want to do it in because sometimes it might just be easier to pull it all together and then reduce. Or sometimes it might just be like, hey, you know what? I'm just going to do it along the way, make my life a little easier. Okay, so this one, you could go ahead and pull this together. So I went ahead on this one and I multiplied and then reduced. Okay. So I did 18 times 30 and then 5 times 9. So there's the 18 times 30 and the 5 times 9. x cubed, y cubed on the top, y squared, x to the fourth on the bottom. Then it was just a matter of simplifying this or reducing this. So I've got the x's right here, which can be simplified, and I've got the y's right there, which can be simplified. So I used the calculator to reduce that, in case you don't know how to use the calculator. We're going to put in 540 fraction 45. So if you put a fraction in your calculator and you just hit enter, it will reduce it for you. That reduces to just be 12, or 12 over 1. So 12, I just didn't put the 1 there. Now here I've got the x to the 3rd and the x to the 4th. I just re rearranged those so that my x's are on top of each other and the y's are on top of each other. This x to the 3rd, those three x's right there, are going to cancel three of these x's. Right? There's four of them down here. So you got to think of that as like x, x, x. And this one is x, 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 x. Three of these will cancel three of those, leaving me with one in the bottom. Here I've got a y3 and a y2. So two of these y's will cancel two of those, leaving me with one in the top. Now, Hawks doesn't like these unnecessary ones, so I'm going to put this in Hawks as 12y over x. You could have done this simplifying within the problem. You could have said, okay, these y squared, these two are going to cancel one of those, and these three are going to cancel three of those. Just like here, you could have said, okay, 9 goes into 18 twice, 5 goes into 35 times, and then do, or sorry, 5 goes into 36 times, sorry about that, and then get um, a 6 and a 3, sorry, 6 and 2, Ugh, don't mind me, <laughs> and to multiply that to get 12. Can't keep up with my numbers here. It's very late. All right. So... This. 
All right, ignoring my little red note for now, we're multiplying this rational function times this rational function. I realize that this looks extremely menacing, okay? And if you look at this, you're like, mm, nope, that's a just a big old boatload of nope. We're not even going to try that. Nope, nope, you can do this, okay? What you're going to need to do, just like before with how to, um, how to simplify them, you had to factor the top and factor the bottom and then cancel. Well, now you have to factor all four of these if necessary. Okay? That's like worst case scenario is it might be all four. So the only thing that, well, that one's already factored. Nice. Seven, nah, 21, that one's fine. So we're just left to factor this guy. And that's the factor of two, or sorry, the difference of two squares. So we know how it's going to factor. That's going to be that A minus B, A plus B business. All right. So factor the top and the bottom of both fractions completely. You can cancel anything on the top with the same thing as long as it's on the bottom somewhere. So here's what we end up with. This, and I wrote that in red, so I factored it in red. That was an x minus 4, x plus 4. There's my 21, 7, and this. Now, check out what cancels. That x plus 4 and that x plus 4. Gone. It's okay that they're not directly top and bottom because, you know, when you multiply fractions, you end up smushing everything together anyway. Ah, don't, don't look over there. I'm getting scared. Um, so you end up smushing everything together anyway. So all this is going to become the top and all that's going to become the bottom of your big fat daddy fraction. Okay, so those can cancel as one quantity. You cannot cancel this x with that x because that's subtraction and that's a plus. Okay. You cannot cancel anything with a plus or a minus next to it unless you're canceling it as an entire quantity, as an entire factor. All right, and then we got 7 and 21. Okay, we can reduce that. All right, 7 goes into 21 three times. Now let's just write what we're left with. We're left with an x minus 4 on the top and a 1. On the bottom, we've got a 3 and an x plus 4. So tried to color code it here for your viewing pleasure. We got that x minus 4. There's that 1 from the 7. There's that 3. And there's that. I'm going to not write this 1 right here because it's not necessary. And Hawks does not like those unnecessary ones. So I'm just going to leave that out. Do not cancel those x's. You cannot cancel those x's. Okay? If that were a plus, then you could cancel the x plus 4's as one quantity. But you cannot cancel those x's. You cannot cancel those 4's. You cannot split apart and cancel anything that has a plus or a minus to it. You can only cancel it as one quantity, as one factor. All right. Now, I'm going to do some more multiplication, but the next topic is division. Well, you know division with fractions is just multiplication of the reciprocal. So rather than doing a whole bunch more multiplication and then going to division, I'm just going to leave the, I'm going to let the division be more practice for multiplication. Did you catch that? No, that's okay. You can trust me. To divide fractions, we multiply by the reciprocal. So remember, if you have two fractions, remember these days, back when it was just nice, pretty little fractions, you can rewrite this as multiplication of the reciprocal. Remember, the reciprocal always flips the second fraction. That's important. So here, I'm writing little screaming notes here on there. Um, divide and simplify. This is just a multiplication problem. Okay. You have to just first, don't start canceling anything. That's the first thing. Just, just don't. Because if you just start like, oh, those X's are going to go away. And that two and that six and, 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 and this and that, uh, just slow down. Do not try to cancel anything too quickly. The first thing you should do is always write this as multiplication of the reciprocal. Then factor it, then cancel. Okay. <laughs> so that's why I wrote you this little, this little sweet love note. Multiply and flip first. <laughs> you don't need to scream. Just 
really want to catch your attention there so that you didn't forget that. You know, so. Okay. Then factor and cancel. So here's what we're going to do. Multiplication. See it right there? There it is. And flip. That's reciprocal. Now this is just a multiplication problem. I say that like, oh, it's just a multiplication problem. It's a multiplication problem. So remember the multiplication, you have to factor all four of these if they're not already factored. All right, that one's factored. This one, you can take out a GCF. This one's factored. This one, you can take out a GCF. Okay, so x minus 1 was factored out. That was already factored. Taking out an x, GCF from here, we get that. Taking out a 2, we get this. Now remember, you can cancel anything on the top with anything on the bottom. So this x minus 1 cancels with this x minus 1. I'm not canceling that x and that x. I'm canceling that entire factor right there with this entire factor. I'm canceling this x plus 1 with that x plus 1. Now, can I cancel this 2 and this 6? Can I say, oh, okay, well, 2 goes into 6 three times? No, I can't because we don't have one on the top and one on the bottom. It's important that we get that top and bottom because that's really that division that we need, that, you know, something over itself being one. That's what makes it cancel. So here's what we're left with, an x in the top, and then it looks like we have a 6 and a 2 in the bottom. So we got 6 times 2, which is 12. So this big, scary, you know, monster-looking thing just simplifies to be x over 12. But there was a lot of work involved with that. So we have to rewrite the division as multiplication of the reciprocal. Then we have to factor four, not one, not two, not three, four things. Now with any luck, some of them are already factored for us. Okay. In this case, there were. That one was factored. That one was factored. So we only had to factor these two. And that's what we did here. Once everything's factored, then you can start canceling. But if you start canceling right here from the beginning, you've already messed up. It's it's just, there's, there's nothing, you can't recover from that. All right, so let's look at this one. This is, this is a pretty, pretty nasty looking one here. All right, so pause the video. First thing you want to do is multiply by the reciprocal. Change that to multiplication. Take the reciprocal of the second fraction and then start factoring. Okay, so here's my, my little screamy note again. So here we go. There's multiplication and then I flip only the second fraction. Okay. All right, we have four things to look at to, to factor. All right, does this have a GCF? No, it doesn't have a squared, so all right. That the factor on there. That one's got a GCF, so I'm going to take that X out of there. This one's got a GCF of 6X. And this one. So I just want you to see that I'm looking at these individually. I'm looking at 2X minus 1. Is there anything that can factor about that? Then I'm moving my vision to x squared minus 2x, just that one. And then I'm looking at just 6x squared plus 12x. And then I'm looking at just 10x squared minus 5x, okay? So I'm looking at these one at a time, numerator and denominator, and factoring those four separately. Now, fortunately, I only have to factor three of these because the 2x minus 1 doesn't have a GCF to come out. So here's what I've got. That 2x minus 1 comes down. I got a GCF of X from here. This one I had a GCF of 6X that I took out. This one had a GCF of 5X. Once I factored everything out, then I went ahead and canceled stuff, which probably wasn't a good idea because you can't really see what happened. But I've got, let me just try to grab a, some colors here so that maybe you can maybe follow. I'll color code it for you. 
So I've got this 2x minus 1 and this 2x minus 1. That's one quantity. Those cancel. I've got this x plus 2 and this x plus 2. Those cancel as one quantity. Then I've got this x and this x can cancel. Now, also, that x could have canceled this one over here instead of that one. It didn't matter which one you canceled, just one on the top and one on the bottom. Now, with all that gone, it looks like I'm left with a 6 on the top, an x, and a 5 on the bottom. Once you get everything factored, you should see a lot of stuff go away. You should see a lot of canceling happen. And remember, you're canceling these out as factors. You're not canceling out the individual components here. So last one. And then if you guys need to see some extra examples, I can always come back and do more. First thing you want to do is multiply by the reciprocal. So multiply by the reciprocal. And then we got a factor. The x plus 3 and the x plus 2, done. But these two... Those are trinomials. There's no GCF to take out. They have an A value of 1, so they're both going to be trial and error. So pause the video and try to factor this trinomial up here and this one down here separately, and then see what's going to cancel. And both of those are going to factor by trial and error. Okay, so we get x plus 3 drops down. By trial and error, this factors into x minus 1 and x plus 2. By trial and error, this one factors into x minus 1, x plus 4. Then that x plus 2 comes down. This x plus 2 cancels that x plus 2. This x minus 1 cancels that x minus 1. That leaves me with x plus 3 over x plus 4. Do not cancel those x's. Okay, see that plus sign right there? That means you cannot cancel those x's separately. You could cancel this as one quantity if those were the same number, if it was x plus 3 over x plus 3, or x plus 4 over x plus 4. But you cannot cancel those x's. You cannot reduce these numbers. Those are stuck together. Okay, I know this was kind of a long video for this uh, for this part, so thanks for bearing with me. Um, I promise chapter 7 is not going to be too terrible. We're actually going to skip um, 7.3, and I'll determine just how much depth we're going to go into because we only have you know just a little while left to uh, get through chapter 7. So I'll try to um, kind of you know figure out how much or how little we can get away with doing in chapter 7. So... Look at it as, you know, let's hope that this one's going to be the, uh, maybe the worst section in chapter seven that we have to contend with. So, all right. See you later.